Did you know that Chicago has hosted the presidential nominating convention of a major political party a whopping 25 times? It's true. And next summer will make 26, as President Joe Biden recently announced that Chicago has been selected to serve as the host of the 2024 Democratic National Convention. How did we beat out cities like New York and Atlanta to land the 2024 convention? How will hosting a convention of this magnitude impact our city? But perhaps most importantly, are we ready? Well, I'm Andy Zopp. This is Chicago Newsroom 2.0. We'll talk about the convention and more after this short break. This week on In the Money, we will learn about the certification process and how it works. It shows some level of reputability and credibility for your business who have gone through this vetting process to get certified. I already had kind of a lead, but that said to me that yes, companies and organizations are paying attention to the certification. In the Money airs on Thursday at 7 p.m. on CanTV19, CanTV.org, and on the all new CanTV Plus app. It is considered the gold standard of public policy think tanks in Chicago, where everyone who's anyone on Chicago's political scene has to make an appearance. And today we have the distinct pleasure of having the chair of that organization on the program as today's first guest. Please help me welcome to the program Jackie Robinson Ivey, chair of the City Club of Chicago. Welcome, Jackie. Thanks, Andy. So glad you're here. I'm so glad to be here. So I know what the City Club of Chicago is and what it does, and uh, but our, my audience might like to know, like to know a little bit more. So tell us a little bit about the City Club. It has a long history, and tell tell us why it's important to Chicago. Well, since 1903, which makes City Club 120 years old this year, um, we have been the public affairs forum for Chicago, the as you said, the think tank, the place to hold the conversation. And it looked a lot different 120 years ago than it does today. It was um, a group of about nine men who would gather um, for lunch, traditionally, and they would have a forum, have discussions, and go back to work. And I don't know what happened, you know, the lunch. I don't know what kind of lunch it was, whatever. But um, they'd hold their conversations, and they allowed people to, the, the members, to have their, their questions asked in an open forum, and we've held true to that tradition today. Great, and how often do, does the club meet? Well, we are ramping back up. People are, I know most people are back outside, but we are still ramping back up. We are at about two to three events um, a month. We did six last month though, so um, it ebbs and flows, but we'll get back to the, to, to the two to three a week at some point. And it's called a club. Do you have to be a member? Do you have to apply to join, or is anybody welcome? How does how does how does it work? Everyone is welcome. Um, there is a membership, and uh, membership has its privileges, obviously. Um, but everyone is absolutely welcome, and we welcome friends as well as guests. And membership is you, you really if you join, you pay a membership fee, and then you get the opportunity to come, right? To Just come, so right. we're clear that membership is pretty wide open, right? Membership is wide open, and um, there is not a bad seat in the house. The majority of our forums, as you know, are held at Maggiano's, but that does not mean that they all will be held there. Mostly the traditional lunch is held there, but we are moving out into the communities. Uh, we are, we've done some things in um, the hatchery on the west side. Uh, we did a perform on the North Lawndale Employment Network, which was wonderful. And um, sure. I think we're talking about doing some things like out in Bronzeville, and you know, we're kind of stretching that a little bit. But That's awesome. At least there's not a bad seat in Maggiano. I don't so. think I knew about the North Lawndale. I must have missed that it one. It was wonderful. And it was held in the Michael Scott Ballroom, right. or Michael Scott Conference Room. Nice. Terrific. So just for our, my audience, talk a little mm -hmm. bit about who are, you know, I said everybody who's important, but give us some idea of who comes, what's, how does it work? Because you do speeches, people mm -hmm. give remarks, but mm -hmm. you also do panels mm -hmm. as well. So let's talk about kind of what, what does a city club program look like? So it varies, and you know this. I feel like I'm sort of preaching to the choir here <laughs> because you already know this, but uh, we do have single uh, where people are having their monologues or giving their, and that comes from a, a, a lot of um, elected officials mostly. Right. But our programs are not 
um, siloed only for elected officials. We have public policy forums. We have um, civic engagement forums. We talk about the arts. Uh, we talk about um, today was community policing, right. which was a wonderful forum. Anthony Driver and McColl, and I don't want to miss a name, so I probably shouldn't say any more. But it was a great forum, and it was a panel yeah. discussion um, hosted by WBEZ, and um, great, great forum of discussion. So the forums can vary. Um, not always a panel, not always just a single person. Sometimes it's a conversation. Right, exactly. And you cover, and you cover literally every topic that's important to the city. Anything Con that it carrying on the conversation for Chicago. Community development, mm -hmm. um, education, mm -hmm. policing, as mm -hmm. you just said. So how did you get involved and how did you get to become the chair? Interesting, um, I was attending as a guest and in my role at my organization, I was like, this is probably something that we could get involved in. And we should just take a minute and let's talk about, just for a little bit, what's your role, what's your organization and what is your role there? I serve as Senior Vice President of Public Affairs and Government Relations for the Northern Trust. Which means that you are uh, out and about, kind of a mover and shaker of your own, in your own right. Oh, that's very kind of you to say. I think it's just a fancy way of saying that I'm the bank's lobbyist for state and local members. No, it's a little bit more than that, which it's about making relationships which is and what you a, have. And having a good external right. presence. Right. Um, as you know, that can be challenging. And I've watched and learned so much from you over the years that having an external presence involves a lot of internal work as well. So we try to make sure that all the, you know, loose ends are tied up and that we, you know, are doing what we need to do externally for the community, for the communities we serve and in which we live in. Right. So you're at an event in mm -hmm. your role for the bank. And I thought, gosh, this is something we should get involved in. So I started inviting more people from my organization. And I got back to my desk after a meeting or something, and I got a call from one of our former CEOs. And he said, you're going to get a call. And I was like, I'm going to get a call. It's going to say what? And well, That's like a classic <laughs> Chicago thing. Right. Like you're you're going to get a call. You're going to call. I know a guy. Just answer it. Right. I know a guy. And I did so and have been a board member for a number of years, and it's been a great experience. Yeah. And it just and, kind of moved progressively from there. And um, so what does the board, how does the board pick the speakers or help identify kind of the slate of candidates, or uh, not candidates, but... Um, Sometimes it is candidates. <laughs> it is, right. Can, that's another thing. Candidates often come mm -hmm. and speak. I they spoke do. there when I was a candidate. You did, you office. did. And, um, and you spoke when you were... Uh, CEO of the Urban League as well. I did. Yeah. I so, did. Uh, so we have moved into 2023, and while I'm sitting in the chair, one of the things that's most important to me is to make sure that we have a wide array of discussion topics and people. So, if you look at the audience today, it's vastly different than it was, you know, five, seven, ten years ago. And part of that is because I think, and the rest of the board believes that the audience, the members, ought to look very much like Chicago. And um, that's usually important, not only to me personally, but I think professionally and for the city, it should be important. So the board does make suggestions, and we've given them, the, we've given the staff uh, four or five topics that we want them to cover. But they have done such a great job, and they're reaching out to every group, if it's you know, diversity, equity, inclusion, if it's um, ESG, if it's sustainability, um, they're touching on things that as a rule would not come top of mind for a city club, but we're holding, as I said, the conversation. Okay, and um, so, you know, one other thing we didn't talk about is that people do get to ask questions, Absolutely. right? They submit questions, and so while it's not really like a debate format, people do get to ask mm -hmm. queries of the people who are speaking, right? They do. And so it is a forum to raise difficult topics, and sometimes those questions are pointed, Right. Very tough. Yeah. And we have an obligation to ask the question. Uh, a, a bar time, running yeah. out of time, because sometimes our speakers will go over and we try to be as clear to getting out between 1 and one fifteen as we can. Um, we try to ask as many questions that, and, and the tough ones. We don't hide from them. And we tell the speakers who come, any of our guests, whatever is asked, we try our best to make sure that they are answered. 
And the other thing is that uh, you make the people who are asking the questions identify themselves. They so there's no yeah. anonymous yeah. questions, right? Every so. once in a while we'll get some, and, and they should be there also. Yeah. People can pre-submit questions, but every now and again we'll get someone who, you know, will submit a question that we don't know. If it's a good question, <laughs> we will ask it, but good. as a rule, no, we try uh, to be true to A club question. <laughs> you know, having a space where we can have the people who are driving the public policy agenda here in Chicago come and speak and people can come hear them mm -hmm. and ask questions is really, really important. And it's network. something we're passionate about here mm -hmm. at Can TV too. and network, mm -hmm. right, is really great. And uh, I can't think of a better person to be leading that organization Aww. than you, my friend Jackie. Thank Jackie you, Robinson Andy, Ivy. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming and, and, and talking to me, me uh, about it today. Thank you. It's always a pleasure, and uh, we look forward to having you here. Hope you'll come back. Absolutely. We'll be right back with the roundtable. Stay with us. In 2020, it was estimated that over 65,000 people experienced houselessness in Chicago. Loss of jobs, domestic violence, and racial inequality are all factors that lead to houselessness. This week on Change Agents, we will meet agents of change who bring love to our unhoused. Join us this Thursday at 7.30 p.m. on CAN-TV 19. Stream us on CANTV.org or download the CAN-TV Plus app. Chicago beat out a lot of stiff competition to win the bid to host the 2024 Democratic National Convention. Why is it a big deal that we were selected? What happens now that we've been named next year's host city? And are we up to the challenge? Well, here to help us work through all of that are today's roundtable participants. Tia Carroll Jones, Managing Editor of Chicago Citizen, Delmarie Cobb, Political Consultant, and 1996 DNC Press Secretary, the first black person to ever serve in that role. And Eric Kincaid, Associate Vice President of Sales, Choose Chicago. Welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. So we've been selected. Why, why do we care? Why does that matter? Who wants to go? Delmarie, you have a little bit of experience with why this matters, so you start with you. Well, it was very exciting in 1996 to have the convention, mainly because it gave the city an opportunity to vindicate itself right. from what had happened in 1968. And so because of that, there was so much interest in the convention being here in Chicago from the media. We had 15,000 credentialed media who came to the convention uh, in 96 specifically to see what was going to happen and was it going to come off without a hitch. And it did. Uh, we had the, the weather turned out to be great. Uh, and of course, we know Chicago, there's no city prettier than uh, Chicago in the summer. And, uh, and, and then the opportunity to showcase the city and the infrastructure that was that was built up around the city. And of course, when the convention leaves, the infrastructure stays. So uh, many neighborhoods benefited as a, as a result of having the convention here. Exactly. In fact, if, 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 you're, on the, if you're on the Kennedy and you're driving through downtown mm -hmm. and you look at the bridges, you can see the little, mm -hmm. the pretty, ar the pretty uh, uh, iron work that was put in for the convention. And every time I look at it, I remember that. So Eric, Eric you were yeah. part of the process to fight for the convention. Choose was in the lead. Why, why such a big deal? Why does the city care that the convention come here? Yeah, there are many reasons why this is big, but one of the key things I want to touch on for why it was big for Chicago now is that there's a pivotal time coming out of COVID and then as well as, you know, us as a hospitality community trying to navigate the waters of what we look like post COVID. So Chicago is known for large scale events, large conventions. This is what we do. And typically we plan these 10 years out for a show this size, but it also goes to show for Chicago, we can pivot and we can navigate the waters to make this happen in a short time frame. But it also, I would say, it brings us together. It shows that Chicago is a collaborative city, that all entities can come together for something important as a DNC and really execute it and showcase it and do it well. Great. All right. I'm gonna, there's two points you made in there that I'm going to circle back to. One is the time frame and the other is the coming together. But I want to ask Tio, you know, we competed against some other major cities, New York, Atlanta. Why, why do you think us, you know, how, why, what, what did Chicago, I mean, I have some views about it, but I'm, I'm a tad biased, so I want to ask an objective observer, why, why Chicago as opposed to any of those other cities? I think because we've done it before. Mm -hmm. We've kind of shown that we can do it. We've also been at the forefront when it comes to 
having some pretty big names come out of our city. So I think that if nothing else, the DNC was impressed by us. Any political, I've heard some political reasons, right? Mm -hmm. That there, that the party thinks there might be some political upside to being here uh, in the center of the country. Delmarie, I know uh, you're our, one of mm -hmm. our political experts here. What do you think? Well, certainly, I mean, Chicago is, uh, and Illinois, our blue state. Um, and, and the other part of it is that this is a union town. And when you're talking about jobs and, and infrastructure improvements, and uh, you couldn't ask for a better place to have a big event. And Chicago, as Tia has said, uh, we've done this before. Uh, we've had many conventions here. We're going back to the same site, the United Center. We know what uh, that site will, will do. We know how to convert it into a convention. Um, and, and so it's in the center of the city and it will have an a, a, a important effect on the whole community, not only surrounding the United Center, but the whole city in terms of the jobs that will come out of it. We're going to have uh, 12,000 volunteers. You're going to have 50,000 possible visitors. Uh, so when you think about all the uh, indirect and direct uh, money that will be generated as a result of the convention, it will help us, as you said, get back on our feet mm -hmm. and help all the businesses uh, that suffered under COVID. Right, so there's a, a direct economic Correct. impact, right, which is one of the things Choose works to drive, right? Eric? Correct. Yeah. And I do want to add, as you kind of hit on that, is that you know, this is not just an Illinois thing. We had a lot of support when we were putting a bid together in regards to other surrounding states because they see that true economic driving power that this convention will bring. Um, and then on top of that, I will just to hit back on the hospitality community. It was everyone from restaurants to hotels to even our, our union and labor. So I think to showcase that as, as Chicago is a place that we do have the blue walls, you say, is that that is important politically. Right. I, I think there's also some energizing factor, right? So, I mean, keep in mind, you know, we people, there will be delegates from Wisconsin. There'll be de delegates from Iowa and from Indiana, Democratic delegates. And as you know, you know, uh, in 2016, we, those, those part of, that part of our party didn't get as energized as we needed them to get. And there's, of course, some worry, right, that with President Biden that, you know, you, you know how it is in the second <laughs> term. People are like, they're not as excited as the first. Uh, and so I think, I don't know, Tia, what do you think? Do you think we'll get some extra bang for our buck from our uh, fellow Democrats in, in states surrounding us that um, might want to get energized about supporting the Democratic Party in the, in the presidential election? Hopefully. <laughs> I'm very hopeful. Um, I think that those states could also benefit from the commerce and the things that we're going to get. So I just we, I want to I want to talk a little bit more about kind of the impact on Chicago, but I want to just ask you, just so people know, what does the press secretary do? It sounds really big. Well, it sounds like does a lot. It sounds like you didn't get sleep for no, a I while. Didn't. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and I still haven't recovered. Um, no, it was uh, as I said, the fifteen thousand credential media. Right. I, I mean, I literally had to talk to many of them right. uh, to talk about what it was they wanted to get when they came uh, to make sure they got the credentials. Uh, I had to talk to them about what you know, every step of the way, where we were in, in the different phases of the of the convention. Um, we had messaging. Uh, when I first came on board, uh, we were getting a lot of negative stories. And that was one of the reasons why they brought me on board, because they were like, wait a minute, we got to turn this around. And so I had the outreach to the local media. That was one of the, my first uh, things, uh, tasks, was to call together all the local media to meet the convention uh, staff. And you watch the staff go from maybe 10 people to all of a sudden 300 people. Wow. And it's happening right before your very eyes. And you're responsible for the messaging of everything that's going on from the day to day, from the build out, to the logistics, to transportation, to the union fights, uh, in terms of who gets what, you know, uh, in terms of the construction companies. So you're responsible for telling that story to right. all of the media. Wow. That's, uh, and it's a lot, as you said, bought up credentials, but also, you know, 
from around the world, right? right. This is, you know, the Democratic mm -hmm. National Convention gets covered globally. And it seems to me, Eric, again, just talking about what what happens for the city, it seems to me is also an opportunity for us to, to show our global, our international presence and, and the upside of our status as a, as a welcoming sanctuary city, right? Because we are so diverse. Mm -hmm. I, that, I know that was part of the pitch, right? That was a major part of the pitch. And, you know, <laughs> and let's just be honest, there is a... Uh, a perception of Chicago right now does not meet the reality. And right. so reality of, of those who live in Chicago, we know that it is a city that does come together in times need to, when we need to. Um, and then also, this also gives us a chance to really showcase to the world who Chicago is, what we are, what we're made of. Because I love to say we're the heart of, of the Midwest. And right. our mis Midwest hospitality show through and through. Right, well then that gets us to, will we be ready? Right? I mean, you know, people are, and really talking about the perception and reality don't really align. You know, people, when, I don't know, I'm sure when you guys go other places, the first thing people ask you are, are you safe? Mm -hmm. Are you going to be safe? Mm -hmm. And so, are we going to be ready? And, and Tia, what do you think? Are we going to be ready? Um, are we going to have our act? It's, it's a year away. We don't have a lot of time. We'll have a new superintendent of police. We have a new mayor. Yes. Are we going to be ready to make sure that uh, people stay safe? I think that we can stay safe. We can. We have the ability to make the city safer. The work has to be done now right. for next year. Right. I will, I will jump in and say that I think that we will be ready, as I stated. We do large conventions like this all the time, large scale events all the time. And we, our number one goal is always to ensure the safety of, of those attending, whether you're local or traveling into Chicago. And I do think that with the host committee that they're putting together right now, that the infrastructure will be there with Chicago, Chicago PD. And I think that overall, we will be ready because we're always ready for these types of events. And it also showcase to the world that if you're not meeting in Chicago or hosting an event in Chicago, that you, you definitely should. Right, so it's a great opportunity to show, Correct. you know, what kind of convention we can do. Del Marie? And it's a, and it's a good opportunity, too, for um, small businesses to take part in the convention. Oh, right. One of the things we did when I was there is that the DNC put uh, $1.5 million in three community banks mm -hmm. while I was there. So 500000 in each bank, uh, two black banks and one Latino bank. And the DNC cannot take the interest because it's a federal entity. And so the local bank keeps the interest. But the caveat was that if you decided you wanted T-shirts, you could then go to that bank, get a $5,000 micro loan to do T-shirts for the convention. Mm. And so that was an incentive. And the first balloon drop was done by a black balloon uh, uh, shop here. Oh, wow. It was the first time that ever happened. Uh, one of the florists, Leo Flores, was the provided the flowers for the convention. So we, the first insurance consortium was for the Democratic Convention that was black. And so we went out of our way to make sure that black people and Latinos had an opportunity to take part in the convention. Well, yeah, that's, I, I, you know, I, in the back of my head I thought about it, but that's such a great point. I mean, what a great opportunity to showcase what you can do and what your business can do, and also to showcase the breadth of businesses that we, that we have here in Chicago. So speaking about money this year, the and the cost of the convention, you know, I know people may be worried that you know now we're, we're we have all these issues about our budget, and now we have to pay for this convention. But the government is not going to foot the bill for this convention, right? And I saw that uh, Governor Pritzker has already said that he's going to ensure with his fundraising that the DNC is going to be debt free. Is that that something else you talked about, Eric, as, as part of the pitch that you know we're going to be ready to make sure this happens and happens well. Yeah. So not to get too into the finances, so Choose <laughs> Chicago doesn't get into that. Too, but I will too say, deep in the weeds. yeah. But I will say that um, one of the key things is that, as I mentioned, they're putting together the host committee now, which is the forerunner, the person who will put together the fundraising package and ensuring mm -hmm. that you know it is net zero. And I will say that. In 1996, Chicago has been the only convention that has operated at that level. Wow, that's terrific. And so for the host committee, if people are interested, how does the host committee get selected? Who picks those people? It's a, it's a group of community leaders yeah. from nice. businesses to government to local tourism authority. So maybe Lynn Osmond, my present CEO. Right. Oh, 
uh, terrific. And uh, someone from the uh, from the pier, oh, McPier, yeah. and, and the mayor's office, and the mayor's mayor's governor's office, office, office all right. are part of it. Right. right. Awesome. Well, that that is uh, it's it's exciting. So, um, what else should we be thinking about? What should we be? What should people? How do people prepare? You know, should we? You know, should they be? If you're an entrepreneur and you're interested, what should you be looking for to stay to keep your eyes out for how you can participate in the convention? I know the one thing I've seen already, and I think people need to really do their homework, because I know when I was going for uh, the press secretary position in 96, it really was a matter of me doing my homework and staying on top of it, uh, not waiting for somebody to come to me, but I actually pursued it. And that's what people need to do. I mean, go get online and go to the Democratic Illinois Democratic Party to find out uh, what are they doing right now? Are they looking for volunteers? Are they taking names? Can you be a delegate for the convention? There's going to be many, many opportunities, and you've got to pursue them so you can find out which one works best for you. But again, uh, look for the opportunities to showcase our various communities. I mean, that's the beauty of Chicago, is the 77 communities. And so that's what we want to showcase. Right, uh, our communities and, and our people too, okay. right? I think it's a, it will be a great opportunity. So I'm gonna ask each of you, if we're, we are close to finishing up in time. So if you were talking to someone and you're saying the, the 2024 convention's here, I'm excited because, Tia, we'll start with you. I'm excited to see as a journalist which stories are going to come out of the convention. Right, and you're worried? Do you have a worry or concern? Not now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like to hear. Delmarie, how about you? I'm excited because... I'm excited to see the opportunities that it will provide for the city to showcase itself. I mean, again, it puts us on Front Street. We always do well when we're on Front Street, and so I just expect that to happen again. Right. Eric, how about you? Oh, sorry. And your wor any worries? Anything? No, I don't really have any worries. I think it's going to be even better than 1996. Yeah. Uh, Eric, how about you? I, I concur. It's going to be our moment. It's going to be our time to shine. It's going to be our time to really showcase and tell our story, to tell our personal story without allowing someone else to do that. Um, and I don't have any worries. Right. I, I think that, similar to my friend here, I think that it is going to be groundbreaking. It's going to be bigger and better than it's ever been before. Yeah. I think to your point earlier, I think this is what we do well. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, what I'm excited about is you, you touched on this, is that perception is not reality, right? You know, I spent so much time in different roles, you know, uh, overcoming people's perception uh, about Chicago. Uh, but then they get here and they're like, oh my God, this is an amazing city. And so I'm, what I'm excited about is that people will get to see uh, really get to see how awesome and amazing the city is from all over the country. And uh, that it'll be a, a, a great opportunity for us to really not only tell our story, but change our story, right, mm -hmm. to something more positive. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming and uh, talking about this exciting uh, victory for the city and uh, this exciting opportunity for us, something to look forward to in 2024. Uh, I think really appreciate it. So thanks for coming. It's great to see, see you, Tia and Dalmarie again. And Eric, great to have you. I hope you'll come back. Of course. Thank you very much. I'll be right back with my final thoughts. Hi, I'm Ryan G. I'm the host of Tweenish. This week on Tweenish, we'll be talking about blended families. I get two Christmases, two birthdays, and two Valentine's Days. How about you, Cameron? Um, so I agree about the two Christmases. Check out my new show, Tweenish, on Can TV 19. Chicago has been chosen to host the 2024 Democratic National Convention. And whether it goes off without a hitch, like it did in 96, or whether it goes more like it went in 1968, still remains to be seen. But here's what we do know. Chicago is a city like no other. I know that, you know that, and even President Biden knows that because he picked us to be next year's host. And that no matter what happens next year, we know Chicago will make history yet again. Thanks for watching Chicago. Until next time, be well and well-informed. <laughs>